Hey everyone, this is Tim from Your6 Studios. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to reinstall the system software on your PlayStation 5. So this could be useful if you encounter some sort of error or something like that, and you need to completely wipe everything. So the installation file is only 1.4 gigabytes, so you don't need a large drive whatsoever. This one's only 16 gigabytes. And if we go over to our computer right now and we open up File Explorer, we need to format the drive to EXFAT or FAT32. So just locate it on the left side here. Uh, we can just go to this PC and we can find it a little bit quicker. So mine is the D drive. And make sure you have the correct drive selected. So we can right click on it then and then go to format. And we're going to delete all the data and information off here. So we can see the different options. We have NTFS or EXFAT or FAT32 if it is a smaller uh, drive that you have plugged in under 32 gigabytes, I believe. So I'm going to choose EXFAT and then I'm going to go to start and it's going to delete everything off of there. Okay. Now what we want to do is click into the drive, then right click and go to new and go to folder and type in PS5, all capitals, otherwise it won't be recognized. Then click into the PS5 folder, right click and go to new and go to update all capitals. Otherwise it won't be recognized. And then this is where we're going to drag our uh, update folder for the reinstallation files. So let's go to a web browser now and go to playstation.com just like this. And then we can go to support and go to hardware. Then choose councils and select the PlayStation 5. Now let's go to PS5 software update and scroll on down. And we can go to where it says update using computer and then select PS5 system software update. Scroll on down under here and let's go to where it says PS5 console reinstallation files. So we wanna make sure we get this and not the PS5 console update. So the correct file will be about 1.4 gigabytes in size. So let's select this and download it and then save it. Now, if we have any kind of numbers afterwards, we want to go ahead and delete that. So if you download this multiple times, you need to get the PS5 update.pup file. If there's any kind of uh, letters or text or anything after that, it's not going to be recognized. So let's go to yes right now and replace that since I just downloaded the update file and it should be downloading in the top right now. All right, so it's downloading now in the top right. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna wait for it to complete. And then I'm gonna go to show in folder and I can see where all my downloads are. So let's go to show in folder right here. And then I can minimize to this and I'm gonna drop and drag the update file on over to uh, my folder here now. So I can see this is about 1.4 gigabytes, so that's the correct size. And now I'm going to drop and drag this on over to my update folder on my USB drive. And it's going to transfer over and mine's going to take about one minute to go ahead and complete. So here is my PlayStation 5 Pro. The USB uh, slots are on the back, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my USB drive. And then I'm going to turn off the console. So what I want to do is hold down the power button. And if I hold it down, it's gonna automatically turn it off. So if you keep holding down, you're gonna hear one beep, and then you're gonna hear a second beep, and this will manually turn it off. Make sure it's not in rest mode or anything like that, or the safe mode. Then when it's completely turned off, we can start it into the safe mode menu. And another thing is we need our controller plugged in with a cable so we can operate the safe mode menu. Now let's hold down the power button. You will hear one beep, and then about 10 seconds later, you will hear a second beep, and when it's completely turned off and we hold down the power button, this will start it into the safe mode menu. Now we can press the PlayStation button and we can operate the safe mode menu. Now let's go on down to option number eight, reset PS5 reinstall system software. And then go to OK right here and select that. And you should be able to see the update file and it says please wait. Now if it doesn't get recognized, you could try backing out and then going back into this menu. Otherwise, try a different USB device and get the update file again. So it looks like everything is good. Your PS5 will be initialized, all user and all data will be deleted. Are you sure you want to continue? 
So your PlayStation 5 is going to copy over the update and it's going to restart a few times. And this should only take maybe like 15 minutes to complete. After that, your PlayStation 5 is going to start up like normal. You'll see the PlayStation symbol, but you're going to have to log in with your account, uh, connect to the Wi-Fi, and then download all your games again. So this could take a little bit of time just to get everything. So I'm going to sign in. And you can use your mobile application to just bypass this and just sign in with like a pass key. It makes it so much easier. Just scan the QR code when it pops up. And then when we log in, finally, we can go on over to the game library. If we go up and go over to where it says your collection right here, you can find all your games under here and you can simply just download them. So let's go down to a game. So here's a game I kind of like playing sometimes is uh, Planicide. So we can just go to download and we can get this back onto our PlayStation, all our games that we had before. And my internet seems like it's a lot quicker to download games than to simply transfer them. So I prefer this method. Now, another thing that you want to go ahead and do is go up to the top and go to settings and go to users and accounts and then going down and you want to make sure your PlayStation 5 is set to primary. So if we go to console sharing offline play right here, uh, this will share PlayStation Plus to all game uh, users on your PlayStation and also all your games over to all users as well. So if you don't enable it, you're not going to be able to play games offline. You'll have to be connected to the internet. Otherwise, you're going to get a giant lock symbol next to all your games. So if you don't have internet connection or an access to the internet, you'll have this giant lock right here. So you have to make sure you enable your PlayStation 5 as primary. So it's very important that you do that. And you should be all set up. If you had any kind of like uh, screenshots and videos, everything is going to be completely deleted unless you save them to a USB device before you go ahead and delete it. So you do have that option to go on over to the media gallery. So if we do this right here, we can press options on the clip and then go to copy to USB drive. So if you got a USB drive plugged in, you can copy everything over right there and maybe transfer it to your computer if you're gonna be using just one USB. That's a way that you can keep your clips. Otherwise, you can upload them to the PlayStation app and uh, download them to your phone. So go ahead and get the PlayStation mobile application. You'll be able to find all your screenshots and your video clips on there. Now, I'll only save the video clips that are three minutes long or longer, and it will only keep them around for 14 days. So you have to download them all within 14 days. So hopefully this quick little video did indeed help you out. did. Leave it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below for more tech out videos coming up next on Your Six Studios.